oh, this show is just so good. It is just so good. I need more people to watch Love Island Australia because the other ones, I don't understand what they're saying because I don't speak their language. And this is the only English version that for me is giving every single time. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Queenie, for those who don't know me, reviewing Love Island Australia, season five, episode seven. Before I get into it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell and leave a comment down below. We're gonna start with um, Abby, who's talking to Trent. And Trent is kind of venting about the day he's had with Savannah. I think she's just like, and then she, she's very comfortable. Yeah, and then she sat there and she was like showing us like what she did in there. It's just definitely not something I normally go for. Like yeah. I'm ready to honestly settle down and find someone. Yeah, but she might be. She's probably more so the girl that I would go for on the outside. Definitely more so than Savs. Yeah, I don't think Savs definitely not my type. But like yeah. dark features, um, I mean like my dark features era. I'm scared of blondes. <laughs> he said, she's not my vibe. That's not my thing. Okay. He also said Abby is more of the kind of girl that he would go for over Savannah. And then he also said that blondes scare him. Those are the things that he said. Now let's remember that for when Savannah and Abby have a conversation later on. They get a text that they're going to be playing a game. I think it was called Candy Shop or something like that. In the game, Nate thinks that Abby and Reed should be a couple. Zach thinks that Nate is the best in bed. And this is where I just want to go back to last week when it looked as if to me, Zach was jealous of Nate. If anything, this just proves my point. Okay, Abby's top three are Reed, Kale, and Trent, who apparently is a bad kisser. He kind of looks like he wouldn't be that great. <laughs> Anyways, Reed's top pick to recouple with is Abby. His second pick is Kira. And his last pick is Tyra. Now this confused me because one, Kira is already feeling like, okay, well, this was a pity thing and we're gonna see the fallout of that. But his whole thing for wanting to stay was to pursue Tyra. So why now was Tyra his last pick? I, I don't know. I, is it last of the three? But even still, that wouldn't be true. No, but if it is true, that makes sense why Kira thinks that that's a pity thing. Okay. I don't know. Maybe I'm confused, but Kira is not confused anymore. She's starting to realize, oh, this man does not like me. I just don't give a fuck anymore. You don't give a fuck? No, do what you want. It's God. been so rough for you in here. You would have been second, but he put me last to spare my feelings. I fucking know it. You are so in tune. It's hurting my feelings more for you being a fake fucking I wish I sent him home. Mm -hmm. Should have sent him home the moment I knew he fucked my sister. On the one hand, I'm happy that Kira has finally seen the light and is seeing that Reed was playing her like a damn fiddle. Ollie, at the very least, was aware of the fact that they don't have romantic potential between each other. They knew that. They accepted that. He also wanted to stay, but at least you knew what his intentions were. Reed wanted to stay under the guise of wanting to pursue Kira knowing damn well he never intended on doing so. Even though he's gonna lie in this episode and make it seem like he was interested, we know he wasn't interested. So yeah, on the one hand, I am happy that Kira is now having this realization. On the other hand, I'm still upset with the entire villa, with the exception of now, Nate, even though he could have said something earlier, because they all knew. They've known for the past 24 hours. Has it been 24 hours or 48, 48 hours? Because this is two nights now. 48 hours. Everybody in this damn villa, with the exception of Abby, knew. Reed doesn't like her like that. Reed has no intentions with her like that. And they just all let her keep hope alive, even though there was none. Abby, and I love this for her. I haven't really seen a lot of bombshells do this. Abby is an equal opportunist and like genuinely an equal opportunist. She's not just talking to everybody just for the sake of talking. She's she's really trying to see if there's romantic potential there. A person she's been struggling to get to know is Nate because Tia is kind of in the way. I'm happy with where I'm at and I told her that. She is, hang yeah. on, shh, wait, what? I can't say that it's not going well, and yeah. it is. Yeah, and it like, I do want to like see how it's, how it's exploring. Yeah. Come on, wrap it up. Reed hasn't really been honest to Kira, obviously, which isn't good because I like a guy to be very honest. Right now, I have a feeling that you would be his number one. I don't think he's really going out saying it to too many other people, but 
He's a little sneaky man and at times I'm not going to lie, so... I feel like it's so necessary to call someone out if other people have something to say. Like, I'm not going to ignore it. This is a Nate Stan account. It is. And after today, it might also be an Abby Stan account. I, it, it might be. It might be. I love that Abby is just like, I'm going to call people out on their behavior. Like, I'm not going to talk about you behind your face. I'm going to tell you straight up how I feel about you. And if I feel like you're lying to your person, you need to go and talk to that person. I love this. Now, is she causing a lot of drama? Yeah, she is. And on a personal level, that might piss me off. But as a viewer, I'm eating it up. So she decides to go and confront Reed because she knows Reed is playing Kira. The way you picked Kira and apparently saying to her that you can see something. That I can see something with Kira. Yeah. No, that I'd be willing to explore options more than a friendship level. Okay. Well, I need you to speak to Kira. Oh, she's in. She's in bed. Or go into the. Go into the room and say, talk to her before. I would want him to tell me before he's just gone off and said to a girl, "You're my number one." I know Reed is not out here talking about semantics. He was like, well, I didn't tell her I was interested in her. I told her I was opening to, I was open to giving it a chance that maybe we could potentially somehow in the future, potentially maybe if we imagined something could happen. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. The semantics, please. You gave the girl hope. That's, that's. That's, that's the end of story. You gave the girl hope even though you knew that there was no hope between y'all. So Abby's like, okay, well go tell her that I'm your number one and that maybe she's like lower down on the totem pole. He's trying to, oh, I think I heard totem pole is something that we shouldn't say anymore. She's lower on the ranking. Um, Man, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, so he's like, oh, well, she's going to sleep right now. So who cares? Go talk to her. Go talk to her. As he tries to talk to her, I will give him the benefit of the doubt. She had her earplugs in and she was not trying to hear it. But then why does he tell Lucinda, you know, I just want to tell her that she's not out of the running and just because I'm getting to know somebody else more doesn't mean I'm no longer interested in her. Reed is, <laughs> Reed might be worse than Zach. <laughs> nah. The next day, people are finally, finally, Coming to Kira's defense, now that she's been stuck in bed all day, won't come out, she's basically depressed, now people are like, oh, somebody look out for Kira. Everything okay? She's just had such a rough I, feel, I was only so much weak and so... Kira didn't get out of bed and she's just been crying. Yes. I need some girl power. Hey, babe. Kids. What's up? Don't feel any pressure to have conversations or anything like that. Just chill. Come on, let's go up. Let's put on a nice bikini, get in the shower. Kira, I mean this with my whole heart. My whole heart. With the exception of potentially, Nate, potentially. Cause like I said, he could have said something earlier. Not a single soul in this villa, knowing what was going on and not saying anything is your friend. Not a single soul in this villa is your real friend. And the irony of it all is the girl that she hated coming into the show is the one who's had her best interest at heart. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? These people do not like you, Kira. And if they do, they don't like you enough to want to look out for you. They would rather, you know be buddy buddy with everybody, then take a stand against the injustice that's been happening to you. And yes, I'm calling it injustice. It's probably not that deep, but that's how I'm feeling right now. Oh, I'd be so mad if I was Kira. I'd be so, ooh, you'd have to, mm. security would have to hold me back. We see Abby talking to Savannah and she is spilling the tea on what she has been told by Trent. He did say that he like wasn't interested in you pretty much. Yeah, right. And that like all bonds are just like not for him. And I was just like, but that's her. She's comfortable. Yeah. That's who she is. We he doesn't like you. He hates blondes. Like Abby was like, he basically said that he's not interested in you. Like you're not his type. Like I he doesn't want didn't anything. Like that. Okay, so <laughs> I was looking for a lie from what's her name now, Abby. I didn't find one. If you found a lie on what Abby had told Savannah, please let me know. But I felt like what Abby told Savannah was true to what Trent told 
Abby. Now what Savannah went to tell Trent was not true. <laughs> like, she definitely added some spice into the mix. I'm like, well, he didn't say he hated blondes and that he was never attracted to you. Like, that, come on, girl. Like you, you added a little bit of flair to the argument, but unless I'm choosing to just hear what I want to hear, I feel like Abby adequately relayed the conversation she had with Trent. Trent obviously is not going to admit to it because it's ruining his chances, but we know damn well he he's, he's off of Savannah. All he wants from Savannah is a warm coochie. And after that, he's going to chuck you like a, like a ton of bricks, babe. He, no. Now that Kira is finally out of bed, she decides to confront Reed about the entire situation. I know obviously last night that you picked me out of pity. Like I would rather you literally just say to me, yeah, and... I'm not interested. Not interested. I am open to be being interested with you. That's what, that's, that's what I said. I'm open to getting to know you more. Because I only picked you because I thought that you were interested, but clearly you were very slick with your words. So where's the effort? I would have liked for her to ask him point blank, were you using me to stay in the game? Now, would he have lied? Absolutely. But I wanted to hear how he would lie his way through that because we know that to be true. Were you using her to stay in the game? Yes or no? Because if you weren't using her, like Kira said, where's the effort? If you genuinely think that there was potential between us, where is the effort? It's not there, because he's a liar. He's a snake. He's a sleazy, slimy man. Sleazy, slimy. Oh, Reed pisses me off, man. But I'm so glad that Kira is finding her feet. I know some people don't really feel bad for Kira, but I do. I do feel bad for Kira. I feel like... Maybe it's time for her to go home, though. I don't think that they should send somebody in for her. I think I think it's time to log off. They get a text that they are going to do a challenge. In this challenge, they're getting the opinions of the super fans. I don't know who these super fans are. It can't be um, us watching the show because it's already been filmed. So anyways, 90% um, of the public think that Tyra is playing it safe with Ben. 30% think that Kira and Reed will win Love Island, I think. 30%? 30 or 13? There ain't no way it's 30. Okay. 65% think that Tia will break Nate's heart. 15% think that Kale and Nakia are compatible. 5% think that Savannah and Trent will be a couple on the outside. 80% think that Zach likes Lucinda more than she likes him. And 5% think that Tyra and Ben will be a couple on the outside. Ben thinks that it's because Tyra is not reciprocating his energy. Okay, sure. Yeah, let, let's, let's go with that. So after the challenge, Nakia is confused why the public doesn't really root for their couple. I don't feel like anything that I've said ever to anyone or even privately would lead anyone to think that. I think like every day keeps getting better with you, so mm. like way better. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. If anything, we're we're better now. I think after that. But should we go up? Yeah, we're all gravy. Nakia, honey, it's not you. It's your man. And it's not even anything that your man has said. It's actually what your man has not said. We can all see that he's withholding his feelings for Tyra because they don't want to ruin the situation between Tyra and Nakia and between Ben and the boys. So um, they are withholding their feelings. And that's the same reason why the public doesn't think that Ben and Tyra should be together. And so they're both thinking like, oh my gosh, like have I said something to make the public think that we don't rock with each other? No, it's what you're not saying. That's what you're not saying. However you're feeling, say it with your chest because even when you don't say it, we heard it. Lucinda is feeling like Zach is a fanboy and she talks to Abby and Abby says, honestly, I can kind of see that because when I was here, he asked me about like my Instagram following and stuff like that. And maybe he's more focused on the notoriety coming out of the show rather than looking for love. Now, I don't know if this is true because we didn't get to see that part of their date. They did talk about The Bachelor very briefly, but the majority of their conversation was based around the whole like Kira Mavs situation. So could it have happened? Yes. Could it not have happened? Yeah. We just don't know. So um, Lucinda decides to confront. Oh, she also talked to the other girls 
And Kira has been feeling that way as well about Zach. So that is what convinced Lucinda to want to talk to Zach about it. He asked me like how many Instagram followers I had. And Kira's like, I've thought this, but I've thought about that this whole time. Where is she? I'm fuming. That's really fucked me off, I'm not gonna lie. I've never said a bad word about you, and I definitely wouldn't say it to Abby, who I'm talking to for the first time. She just twisted everything that I've Bro, I what a fucking douchebag. Let's go pull her for a chart now. I'm literally let's just go gonna say to her, I'll never even look you in the eye. You're just fucking a... Let's go pull her for a chart. I forgot to say this, but isn't it interesting how all this while Trent knew what Abby and Savannah had been talking about, yet he didn't have the gusto, the gall, the balls, to go and talk to Abby yet now that his group leader is feeling very pumped up and is feeling very riled up, all of a sudden Trent has the confidence to want to confront Abby. Isn't that interesting? Oh, Zach, hmm. it's not nice to have people lie on your name, is it? Is it? Hmm. Yeah, okay. This man is now like about to throw a fit and at the same time, Savannah is talking to Trent again about the things that Abby had said and so they're both like, oh, we're both talking about Abby? Oh, we both don't like Abby? F Abby, she's a douchebag. Like the way that they were talking about her, I was like, oh my gosh, like I understand you're mad, but this is a little OTT. They both decide to then bombard Abby with all these accusations and don't even give her an opportunity to explain herself. Oh, you're a bit of a stir, eh? Yeah. Me? You've just... been here for an afternoon and you're talking shit to everyone. You just twisted it and made it sound 10 times worse. How have I twisted it? What I said to you up there is exactly I what I've said to other people. Is. You have kept on saying. Just because I had a shit date with you and I'm not interested yeah. doesn't mean that I'm in it for her followers and you have to go I'm spreading not saying shit. That. What's your issue? I don't have an issue. You don't come in here and do shit like that. Uh, so what are you guys coming yeah. up? It's a bit aggressive. It's a, it's, 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 do that. it's a bit aggressive. It's just, it's just, nah, I don't even care, man. If I was on the receiving end of feeling like people were lying on my name, I feel like I would show up with this kind of heat too. I'm not going to lie. But that's woman to woman. When it's a man, let alone two men, coming at Abby like that, I'm sorry, it made me feel uncomfortable. It did. It made me feel uncomfortable. And Abby was saying, honestly, I would have respected it if you had pulled me aside to want to have this conversation because right now I'm feeling very backed in a corner. This is overwhelming. So typically I'd be like, girl, why are you crying? But no, I, I could see why she's crying. That was overwhelming, even for me, just watching. Now, again, like I said, I, I, I don't know if the story is true when it comes to Zach, but the Trent thing is true. Well, mm, what, what, um was told to Savannah is true. What Savannah then told Trent, not so much. But yeah, I'm just like, mm -mm. And I love seeing the preview that basically everybody besides, you know, Zach's lackeys are like, no, nah, that was actually out of line. You don't talk to women like that. Like that's, that's just not it. And it is Tia. Tia girl, this is like your, your 15th strike at this point. It is Tia who's like pushing back. And it seems like Nate is having a realization that, yeah, maybe they're not compatible. So I definitely want to see how that conversation goes. I want to see how Abby um, bounces back from this because so far I'm liking her energy. Yeah. Come in and throw some bombs, honey. This is what a bomb is supposed to do. She's doing a damn thing and I love it. As always, please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.